What's going on you guys? It's me your boy Scotty and you're watching my review on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 8 Episode 9. So we're going to get right on into this shit. We're going to start it off with um, Sierra and BK. Um, basically, BK has done his share of lousy things. He's cheated. He possibly got a baby. Um, possibly had a baby with somebody else. He had a lot of shit going on all last season and Sierra took him back every time. But she revealed that she also cheated. And Kirk and Rashida trying to be like marriage counselors or whatever because they've been through the storm and had dirt on their name. They still holding on the champion of this couple game, I guess. And they want to be the ones to give advice on the whole cheating thing and, you know, forgiveness. And, you know, I guess that Kirk and Rashida have gone through a lot of things and a lot of time has passed and they have gotten over everything that they've been through already. But I do not want to take no advice from them. Like, I don't give a fuck what the hell they went through. I don't give a damn what the hell they forgiven at this point. I just feel like they are not the ideal couple to take no fucking advice from. I don't give a damn what they went through. You can call me whatever you want to, but I won't be taking no advice from no motherfucking Kirk and Rashida, honestly. Like, real talk. Because Sierra, although I love her, is a Rashida Jr., basically. Because just like she took, she set her ass on that stage. I have been with Shooter since I was 17 years old. This is all I know. You expect me to lead it? Yes! Bitch, yes! But, you know, it's easy for us to say on the outside looking in what we would have done. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of things that... I stayed around for that I always said I would never put up with and I did and sometimes in relationships you have to put up with certain things but there are certain things that you have to draw a line in and I believe that was the problem with Kirk and Rashida there were no lines being drawn like Kirk was able to go out with his Aquarian self and do whatever the fuck he wanted to do same thing with BK and Shooter with Sierra you know what I mean so this thing you know Carly and Kendra get into it. But my thing about it is Carly has been disrespectful to Kendra this whole trip. First she goes in and talk about, you know, the situation with Jock last year. And then she offers them sex toys and do all this other stuff. Like Carly has been fucking rude and miserable this entire time. And Jock wasn't doing nothing but telling the truth. He wants his relationship to work out without somebody else putting in their little two cents or saying whatever it is they're saying. And Carly, you were being messy. You were introducing a bunch of drama to them and I just don't think that that was right you were dead ass wrong for that and you just need to get over yourself bitch you were wrong point blank and I just feel like you still won't jock I mean like who wouldn't but I think you still won't jock bitch that's why you're doing the things you do and I was disappointed in Kendra because she's been a woman about this whole thing she hasn't been stooping to your level at all but she stooped to your level this time and was ready to whoop your ass and quite honestly if they would have let her go I really believe that she would have beat your ass to be quite honest that's what I really believe and I you know I, that's what I think now Bambi you was doing way too much because you know damn well that shoe did not touch you did not fly past you or nothing it just felt like you wanted a motherfucking problem and you know what I mean? It's crazy. And, um, you know, everybody was talking about how Carly was doing the absolute most and all of this stuff, which she was. And, um, you know what I'm saying? She just, like, walks in and she heard everybody bringing up her name and all of this stuff. So now she wants to clear it up. And she told Bambi, I wasn't trying to throw it in your direction. Trust me. You never throw it in her direction, Carly. Now, as much as I'm trying to drag your ass in this damn review, you did not throw anything towards Bambi. I did not see that shoe go anywhere near Bambi. Bambi was looking for a motherfucking problem. But my thing with Carly is you want to say that, you, that you're getting bullied right now. But what the fuck are you doing? It's like you keeping up shit but don't want to be called out for it. The same thing that Shekana called your ass out for. You want to keep up the shit. But you don't want to be called out when you're keeping up the shit. But you can call somebody else out on their shit all day long and mask it as I'm telling the truth. When in all reality, you're being messy and you don't give a fuck about the situation. You just want to do some shit just to be doing it to put somebody else on blast. But can't nobody put Carly on blast for being a messy ass bitch. Point blank in the fuck period. That's all I got to say about that. Like she going all crazy and shit. Like what you going crazy for? But later on... Um, Rashida was a comfort to Carly. 
Um, she basically talked to Carly about everything that's been going on and how she's been handling things. And, you know, like the most situation, Carly is dead wrong for that. I do think that she's treating Mo a certain way for no reason. Either you still want Jock in the dick or you just don't want to be with this man. Whatever works for you, whatever's clever, deal with it. Whatever is clever. But I do think that you're wrong and I do think that Rashida did give her some sound advice. You know, just hear the man out. See what's really going on. You 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 say you've been looking for love for all this time. You don't want to give that up for one situation that happened before you that he didn't know nothing about himself. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I mean? It turns out Kirk was the reason why he was even here. You know what I mean? Like Kirk is the reason why he even knew what it was, and so he had some help with getting here. Later on, they all decided that they were gonna throw all their insecurities away. Everything from anxiety to forgiveness to unforgiveness to everything. Sometimes you just gotta take shit, throw it in the pun, and just be like, you know, I'm over this shit. You know, let's move on with life. And um that's just where I'm at. In my life, to be quite honest, because there's a lot of people that I held a grudge against. There was a lot of people that I did not necessarily forgive. You know, as far as like men in my past, I didn't forgive them for some of the shit that they did to me. But later on down the line, I said, why should I still be holding something against them when things that they did to me have come back to them tenfold? You know what I mean? Like, it has. So... They should be forgiven. There's people that I've forgiven that I used to that used to bully me in school. I've forgiven them and now I can be cordial. Um, there's certain friends that I've forgiven, but I would never speak to them again. I probably would never have a friendship with them again. But in my mind, they're forgiven. Like some of these people that I used to be friends with, some of them I haven't had a physical conversation with them and say, you know what, whatever happened between you and I is all forgiven as water under the bridge. I don't necessarily have to do that. And my mind, listen, we used to be cool. We used to be good friends. Well, I was your good friend. And it's over with. You know what I mean? Like, you go your way, I go mine. There's no point for me to keep holding this in, holding things against you when you clearly don't give a fuck about me to go on with your life. So why should I still be upset and why should I hold a grudge? I'm not going to hold it. Now, will we ever be friends? No. Do I really have anything to say to you? No. But at the end of the day, um, you're forgiven. I hope I wish you nothing but the best and that's that. That's just how I see things. So sometimes you just got to let go of certain things that have been hindering you in your life because that thing can be a hindrance and it doesn't give you any blessings. Sometimes when you forgive people and let go of the negative things, you get the, the more positive energy. And that's just where I met in my life, honestly. So, um... Later on, Mo um, comes in and Carly walks through the door. He got rose petals everywhere. He just wants to apologize and make things right with Carly for everything that has happened between he and her. And, um, you know, they decide, you know, Carly said, you know what? I'm going to forgive you. We're going to let this go. We're going to see if this baby is yours. And if it is yours, that's just something that we got to work through. You know what I mean? And I love you and I want this to work out. And I was like... Finally, Carly being the more mature adult that she is, because you know she's 50, and it's about time that she acts her age, okay? Like, act your age instead of your motherfucking shoe size, because we all know that you don't wear a size 50. So, girl, let's not. Um, so, um, after all of that stuff on the, on the cabin trip, Mama D goes and talks to Erica and Ming Young or whatever. You know, we ain't seen Ming Young in a while, but... You know, Erica's pregnant with twins, and Mama D wants to know about her and Scrappy's relationship. And Erica was like, you know, it's like, it's it's awkward. You know, they really don't have a relationship. You know, she has reached out to Scrappy and Bambi, and it's kind of like they don't want to do it. But she feels like in order for them to have a better relationship, they do need to sit down and talk about everything. And I think that at this point, they do. I'm not saying that Erica and Bambi need to be friends. I ain't saying that Erica and Scrappy need to be friends. They just all need to be a family unit. Um, Imani and Bambi's, I think Bambi had a son, I want to say. They're sister and brother. Erica and Bambi are the moms. Scrappy is the father of both kids. At this point in time, they all need to be one big blended family. Like, if my mother and father were able to get along when I was growing up, we probably would have had a better relationship with our father if that would have happened. But, 
you know, instead we had the car, we got, we were dealt the cars that we were dealt with, okay? So, there's, there's nothing here to make me want to point the finger, but I do feel like if my dad and my mom and my mom and my stepmom had a better relationship, things would have been so much better for all of us, including my other siblings. Everything would have been better. We would have been able to get along better. We would have been able to have a better relationship growing up instead of waiting till we're all adults to have that. But our parents were the reason why we didn't get to have that, and that's just what it is, so... You know, sometimes you need that stability. Sometimes you need that co-parenting thing to make sure that everything is Gucci. So, my, so Mimi, she meets up with Pooh at a damn Botox, Botox clinic. A place that Pooh needs to stay the fuck out of. And Mimi wanted to confront Pooh about everything that she's been doing to Carly. The way she said Shay Mack up at their party. And you know, Pooh don't have no regrets about what the fuck she did. Now she keep on talking about, yeah, me and Carly was ride or die. We were ride or die. But you know, she started fucking with me and she started doing this and doing that. But you want to let everybody in the world know that she was eating your ass. And it's just something about Pooh. Pooh just looked like she sweat all the time. She looked like she was a man in her past life. And RuPaul looks better than her. It's just that... She just don't look clean to me. And I don't know what it is, but all this talk about you ate my ass and you shitted on my sheets and all of this stuff. Like, girl, it's so disgusting. Like, every time I look at poo, all I can say is... I am disgusted. Seriously. Like, she's just ridiculous to me. And I don't even understand why she's here. Honestly, I don't. But um, she says that she wants to invite Carly to her cocktail party as well as the other girls. So all the other girls can see her for, it, you know, beyond this Carly Red bullshit that she got going on. So I'm like, oh, girl, okay. So Tokyo Vanity and Spice, they're at this little bankhead showcase. And, you know, Tokyo's up there performing and Sky's up there backing her up. And you know what? I um did not like Auntie Spice. Um, I don't. I'm still really not the biggest fan of hers at all. But I do kind of like her in Tokyo's friendship. I do like the fact that they've come a long way. And while they're there and after Tokyo performs, Ak Barbie gets up there. And she wants to perform. And she wants to take shots. And she wants to do all of this stuff. And I was, you know, I grew here. You flew here. And all of this bullshit. So, Tokyo called her out. I why they like it. Tokyo tried to run up. Both of them tried to run up. They couldn't run up. But Spice sat up there like Dennis the Menace. Took off them shoes and ran. She almost got that bitch in her face with that shoe. She almost got She was that close. But one thing I will say about Auntie Spice. And y'all know, like I said, I don't really care for her like that. I don't rock with her like that. But one thing I can say is that when she ride with you, she ride with you. If you her bitch, you her bitch. And she gonna have your motherfucking back. That's one bitch that's gonna cock and bust it right along with you. She had Tokyo's back in this whole situation. So I will say that. Mama D talks to Scrappy and Bambi. And she wants them all to try to get along with Erica. Scrappy feels like me and Erica co-parent. I pay the state. She gets paid by the state through me. What else do I need to do? I take care of my daughter. I do what I'm supposed to do. And that's that. But, you know, Bambi feels like the situation, the network that they got going, is what's working for them. And it just might be working for them. But, you know, who wants to have all that? It's still a little bit of negative energy. It's still a little bit of tension. It may be still things that needs to be discussed amongst the three of them. And that's just how I feel about it. I ain't nobody saying y'all got to be best friends and have dinner together every day and week. But just try to be a bit better with each other. Being that y'all kids are now siblings now. So, Akbar and Sierra talking. Sierra got a phone call from Spice telling her what happened between her, Akbar, and Tokyo. And Akbar really brought her ass in there and tried to make it sound like she wasn't doing nothing. Bitch, she was taking shots. You came for them. And you got what you deserved almost. So, my thing about it is, bitch, you really need to stop it. And not only do you need to stop it, you really need to stop it with the fuck shit and grow the fuck up. Because Atlanta don't belong to you. You keep saying that you the queen and you this and you that and how you feeling real cocky. You don't need to be feeling, you feeling real cocky about the wrong thing. Feel cocky about being a great mom. Feel cocky about... Not going to your cousin for a handout. Be cocky about that. Don't nobody give a fuck about no invisible crown that you don't have. Okay? 
I didn't know who the fuck you were until you performed with K. Michelle last year. Other than that, I never would have known who the hell you were, bitch. So go somewhere and sit down, Akbar. You're not that important. And you're not needed. And we don't care. So you really need to stop. Then you're going to tell Sierra she need to pick a side. For what? I hate these pick a side motherfuckers. Everybody always wants somebody to pick a motherfucking side out of time. But girl, bye. So Carly comes over. And then she tells um, Sierra and... Akbar about her situation with Pooh. And you know, Carly said, well, you know, the bitch invited me to a cocktail party, so I'm gonna show up. And Sierra was like, you know, if I see that bitch anywhere, I might just pop her off. Next thing you know, it's a cocktail party and Carly shows up with the mess. She laughing and giggling and Pooh just trying to say, oh, I'm so surprised that she came and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, Carly just wasn't here for the bullshit. You know what I mean? And Pooh got mad. She started throwing shit, talking about Carly trying to keep up some shit between her and Sierra. Which she probably is. But, Pooh, I don't put nothing past you. You just look so musty and just disgusting to me. Like, girl, you just not ladylike at all. Like... You manly, but you not ladylike. And that surgery and the po and the Botox and the fillers don't help you at all. Like it make you look stronger. You look F one fifty strong, honestly, with all that shit on your face. You really do, honestly, you do. But child, this episode, like I said, this season has been good to me so far, and it's gonna be even better as this shit goes along. Cause next week's episode is gonna be motherfucking lit. Okay. But with that being said, y'all, this is my Love and Hip Hop Atlanta review. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Follow me on Instagram. My shit is below. And um, the next video you will see is Chasing Atlanta. And I might just do another video because that pawn thing had me thinking um, about all the stuff that I've... Um, dealt with over the last year and things that I've forgiven people for. I might just do a video about that. Who knows? But with that being said, child, I'm out of here. Um, it's like 11.33 at night as I film this. And I need to be, after this, I'm going to edit this shit, take a shower, and take my ass to sleep. Because I got to get up at 5 in the morning. Why? Because I got to be at work at 6 in the morning. But with that being said, child, I'm out of here. Till next time, peace.